This is the point in our service every week where we take time to remember and proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, to reflect on truths of the gospel for those who believe. What does it take for a person to become a Christian? I would suggest to you this morning that it is actually impossible for a person to become a believer in Jesus Christ. There are some men at the corners uh, who are going to pass out Bibles. I almost forgot them. If you don't have a Bible, uh, just slip your hand up. Let them know that you need one. If you don't own a Bible, uh, we'd love for you to keep this one uh, so that you can read along with God's Word with us this morning. You can turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. What I want to look at this morning is one of the great obstacles that God overcame in the gospel of Jesus Christ to bring you to him. And there are a number of obstacles that actually make salvation impossible, right? Our solidarity with rebellious humanity, our own personal commitment to lordship over our own lives, our sin natures, which actually render belief in Jesus Christ impossible. Our filth, which makes ourselves unable to clean ourselves, to make ourselves satisfying to God. All of these things are insurmountable obstacles to becoming a Christian and to believing the gospel. But there's another one I want you to see, and it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in verse 3. And this was true of you before you believed, Christian. And what we're about to read is true of your friends and family members who do not yet love the gospel. Paul writes to the Corinthian believers, If our gospel is veiled or hidden, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. This great obstacle to belief, and one of many that unbelievers face, is satanic blinding. If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world, that is Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they do not understand. On top of our own sin, on top of our solidarity with a a world system opposed to God and his ways, in addition to our own desire to rule our own lives, in addition to our own inability to fix anything, we have an enemy, God's enemy, Satan, who would love to keep all of humanity in chains, under the slavery and tyranny of sin and of death, opposed to God. And he blinds the minds of the unbelieving world around us. He blinded our minds before we knew Christ And what is humanity blinded to? The light of the good news, the light of the gospel, of the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God. And this morning, what I want us to do is celebrate what it took to overcome that impossible obstacle. Because you, believer, are here, and it has been overcome. But it was not of your doing. It was only by the grace of God and was only by the power of God. Notice verse 6. Paul says, For God, who said... Light shall shine out of darkness. Do you remember that? I mean, you weren't there, but you've read about it. In the first page of your Bible, when there was no such thing as light, God commanded light which did not exist to come into existence. And light which did not exist obeyed God and came into existence and shone. God said, light be. And it was. Similar to the way God told a dead man to walk out of his tomb, Lazarus, come forth, or a crippled man to stretch out his hand. In the very command of God, the supernatural, impossible work that must be done is done. 
and to those blinded by Satan so that they can't see the light of the gospel. Oh, if only they could see. And the God who called light out of nothing is the one who shone in our hearts to give by his grace the light of the gospel, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. This morning as we celebrate the Lord's table, we remember and celebrate the supernatural miracle that took place when God shone the light of the gospel in our hearts so that we believed. One day you wanted to run your own life and you thought Jesus was boring. The next day he's everything and you want him to be Lord. He's our savior. He paid for our sins by purchasing our redemption by his blood, brought us access to God from whom we are estranged and now by whom we are adopted. What amazing realities. And friends, these are not things we could do for ourselves. This is not a solution we could have come up with. This was all of God's doing, all by his grace, all because God loves to save sinners like us. That's what we celebrate this morning in the Lord's table. And if you're here this morning and God has shown in your heart the light of the gospel, we would encourage you to partake in the Lord's table. There will be an opportunity of silence for you to examine your own heart, confess any known sin, uh, make plans for uh, fruit in keeping with repentance, and an opportunity to rejoice in the forgiveness purchased by Jesus Christ at the cross. And if you're not a member of Grace Bible Church, but you belong to Jesus Christ, we would invite you to partake. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, if you have not yet surrendered, if you know that you're still in darkness in need of the light, this is an opportunity for you, friend, to believe the gospel, to believe that Jesus Christ is the only way, the only truth, and the life. And you can have life in him today by believing that his death in your place satisfies God's wrath against your sin, purchases you forgiveness, and guarantees you heaven. New life can be yours today. We would just encourage you to repent and believe. And if you know you're not a Christian, taking of the Lord's table is not for you. We would just ask that you let the, the cup um, and the bread go by you this morning. We would invite you to come speak to myself or anyone you've met here this morning uh, to explain to you how you can have eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and a relationship to God through Christ. The men are going to come now and distribute the bread and the cup after you've taken a few moments to examine your own heart uh, and rejoice in forgiveness purchased. Take those on your own. I'll close this in prayer.